Hi, my name is Brandi Bryant and I am living with lung cancer. Thank you for taking the time to watch the Lung Cancer Foundation of America's Hope With Answers videos. You've come to the perfect place to learn more from expert patient advocates and dedicated doctors and researchers. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone you know who wants to learn more about living with lung cancer. Welcome to Hope With Answers. I'm Cherry Conrad, and it is my pleasure today to be able to speak today with Dr. Jacob Kaufman. And I would love to hear about more information about KRAS. I want to understand what is the different types and how that means for my treatment as a lung cancer patient. Okay. Um, so as, as we said in some of the earlier sections, um, a lot of this is very personalized to um, each individual patient each individual cancer, taking into account the stage of the cancer um, related to the imaging results and where the cancer has spread to the body. So stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, all of those treatment decisions are a little bit different, okay. quite a bit different. Um, and K knowing um, the, the KRAS biomarker and the specific mutations um, can influence, and it's, it's part of the big picture that the, a lung cancer specialist will use to, um, to tailor the best possible treatments for each patient. Okay. So not all KRAS mutations are the same. Uh, we talked a little bit about that on the last segment that they're kind of, especially with regard to the, uh, the drugs that we have available, each of the mutations is kind of like a different lock and the current drugs that are available in 2022 um, are effective against the specific lock that corresponds with the mutation KRAS G12C. So there's other types of locks? There are other types of mutations in KRAS, and there may be some subtle differences in the biology, but the main, the, for the, from the perspective of the cancer, most of those KRAS mutations are affecting the biology of the cancer in a similar way. But from the perspective of the lock and key analogy and the drugs that we might use to treat these patients, the, the, the drugs that are effective against the G12C mutation, because of the way they're designed and because of this lock and key kind of uh, analogy, they are not effective treatments for KRAS G12D or G12V or the other KRAS mutations. So what do those people do? So one good thing is that regardless of G12C, G12 anything, G60, uh, or N61, other mutations in KRAS, um, we have found that uh, lung cancer that has KRAS mutations, a lot of folks respond really, really well to immune therapy. And that's one of the reasons that um, immune therapy, despite having um, these specific inhibitors of KRAS, the immune therapy is still um, our preferred first line approach for many, not all at all, but mo many stage four patients with, um, with KRAS mutations. Is that like chemo? That is de dependent again on a lot of the specific features uh, of each patient's lung cancer um, and each patient themselves. So in some cases, immune therapy is a class of anti-cancer treatments that, um, that work by activating the body's immune system to recognize cancer cells, attack cancer cells, and help control cancer through the body. So that's how those, that's how that whole class of drugs works, is by um, giving a boost to the immune system to help control the cancer. So that's not chemotherapy. Sometimes immune therapy is used with chemotherapy at the same time. So for some patients that may be the recommended treatment, but for other patients, um, we can often use immune therapy with great results, skipping the chemotherapy. And then there's also patients who we think the, the, the risks of chemotherapy um, may suggest that we should use the immune therapy by itself as a choice. Okay, and so that depends on my stage and that depends on the subtype or other type of KRAS, if I'm not G12C or if I am G12C, right? And if I am G12C, you keep talking about in inhibitors. What, what is this inhibiting? So I'm talking about um, anti-cancer drugs that are available in a pill form that can be taken by mouth. And 
that they go into the mouth, into the stomach, dissolve, go into the bloodstream. And then when there are cancer cells that have the G KRAS G12C mutation, this drug fits into the lock of the G12C and inhibits the G12C function and slows the growth of the cancer cells or leads to cancer cell death. Um, and um, you know, we're, what we're hoping for is to see a response to those treatments where the tumor shrinks, stay under control. Um, a patient may be able to have um, you know, a remission and control of their cancer um, by taking an oral treatment that works not with a chemotherapy approach, not with an immune therapy approach, but by directly affecting the function of that KRAS mutation. It's, it's, it sounds complicated, that's because, um, you know, it, it kind of is. And we didn't have these treatments uh, even five years ago. And in fact, um, researchers had been trying to come up with drugs to inhibit KRAS, because um, we've known about KRAS mutations for decades. And we've spent decades trying to come up with these types of drugs. Um, and just over the last few years of what been when we've made a breakthrough to generate this new this new way of treating KRAS mutated lung cancer. So has that been has that key been tried on the other than G12Cs? So there are um, many people who are trying to develop different drugs, different keys that could be effective for G12D or G12V or other other combinations, other locks for the KRAS. And there's other approaches too. And all of this, as you can tell, you you couldn't just pick up a drug and make it work. This requires a ton of research, a ton of investment, um, promoted in, you know, often by, by folks like the LCFA, uh, as well as, um, you know, government research to try to figure out the next generation uh, of, of treatments that will be effective for, um, for KRAS mutated lung cancer. So it sounds really important that I see a thoracic lung specialist about my cancer. So that means I can kind of expand into my healthcare team. And what you're also telling me is we're not done yet. We've got a long ways to go, but we are so much better. And so it is so, you've given me so much hope. So I know that it's gonna take the research and yeah. truly, you really did give me hope with yeah. answers. Thank you for joining me today. So re research is so important. Clinical trials are so important. Advances, every advance in immune therapy helps patients with KRAS mutated lung cancer. Um, and then these novel ways of inhibiting the function of KRAS uh, itself or the associated biology. All of these are ways that we're trying to improve treatments for KRAS mutated lung cancer. I like to say like ticket cancer is KRAS. So there's that. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today.